welcome back. Time now for a very English occasion as we're invited to the 73rd Goodwood Members Meeting. Conceived by Lord March, the owner of the famous English motor circuit, the Goodwood Members Meeting recreates the atmosphere of events held there throughout the 1950s and 60s. In contrast to the vast crowds attending the Goodwood Revival and the Festival of Speed Hill Climb, numbers are mainly limited to members of the Goodwood Road and Racing Club. Well, the members' meetings at Goodwood are all about how, I guess, motorsport started here, which was literally, you know, motor racing for the BARC members. You know, this is sort of back to grassroots motorsport. Everyone has access everywhere. And I guess, if, you know, luxury is becoming a more and more simple thing, and then this is sheer luxury. I've been coming to the sort of festival of speed ever since I was a, a wee kid. Um, and I've been doing a revival for the last four or five years, and luckily enough, I got to drive it last year. So it's nice to come back here with a proper race car, and I'm really looking forward to having a go. From world famous drivers to those racing and maintaining their own machines, guests are treated to an eclectic array of cars ranging from 1970 Formula One machines to the iconic Group C sports cars of the 1980s. You've got the best lineup of McLaren F1 GTRs I've ever seen, or anyone has ever seen. Then you've got some sort of Group C cars like this, which you don't get the revival. And then you have got some old tall airbox F1 cars. So it's actually really good. It's just a shame it's not a bit warmer. The great thing about these cars is because they're, they're low grip, but the racing's even closer. You know, it's, uh, you know, the only drivers in a lot of the cases are as fast as the pros, and it just makes it good fun. You know, the smell, the noise, the circumstances. Everyone dresses up. Everyone makes an effort. It's just a fantastic event to be at. The racing's very, it's very competitive because everyone wants to do well here. You're conscious that if you get it wrong, you could have a big accident because it's very fast. Some of the corners don't, it's not obvious which line to be on. And, and uh, when you get those right, it's quite satisfying. Owner drivers and other guests mingle freely with legends of the track, as well as celebrities and the cars themselves. It's an access all areas approach. Public, drivers, mechanics, owners, they all have the same big passion for motor racing. The fact that so many people come, whether to race, to watch or whatever, it's, uh, it's an evidence that it's just a great, a great thing. Last year, the members meeting, we didn't quite know what it was going to be like. I'm not even sure Goodwood knew what it was going to be like, because it's completely new. But it's great fun. This has more of the feel of a mini revival now. It's getting, you can feel it getting established and everyone knows what to expect. In true English private school style, everyone at Goodwood is allocated a house or team. Points towards a house trophy are then accumulated in a range of activities, on and off the track. We've got four very famous house captains, great racing drivers, Manuel Ipiro, Jochen Mass, Nicholas Manassi and Anthony Reid. And um, you can gain points to your house throughout the weekend by doing all sorts of crazy things. But the, probably the most serious way and the way you can gain the most points is obviously by winning a race. So then you might be kicking rugby balls, running in running races, quizzes, all sorts of crazy things. The idea is also to involve the spectators. So everybody belongs to a house, every single person is here, and they can contribute to, to bring points to their, to their own house by doing different things if they don't have the luck to race uh, on the race circuit. For racers and spectators alike, Saturday night means party time. This year's street theatre acts are fun fair and music late into the night made the 73rd members meeting a truly classic affair. This year there's no doubt it's bigger than it was last year and I can only see this event growing bigger and bigger. Lord March has absolutely nailed the way to run a race weekend uh, and people just want to be here, you know, the, the enthusiasm around this place creates a, a huge atmosphere and it's an atmosphere we, 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 we love and we want to be involved in. Next we get up to speed with the reigning NASCAR Sprint Cup champion. My name is Kevin Harvick, driver for Stuart Haas Racing, and I'm going to get you up to speed. The music I listen to before a race, something calm to keep me as calm as possible so that I don't get too wound up for the start of the race. The one special item I can't do without when I'm traveling is my pillow. My favorite food that I probably shouldn't eat is probably a hamburger. My favorite ever overtake, Mark Martin, to win the Daytona 500. Last time I laughed till I cried was probably something that my son did. 
The one race I'd love to do is the Indianapolis 500. I'll probably never do that race, but uh, as a kid, I grew up wanting to race or win the Indy 500. The most dedicated fans that I ever meet are, are the ones who have tattoos on their bodies and, and uh, see a lot of fours already, uh, a lot of flame and smiley faces, which is the kind of the insignia of, uh, of my attitude. I'm, I'm pretty happy all the time, but I have that, that uh, flame and mad attitude sometimes when, when things uh, don't set right. The biggest risk I've ever taken would, would probably be the risk that I took to quit my previous job and come to Stuart Haas Racing, but a lot of times you have to take big risks to, uh, to get big rewards, and that one definitely paid off big. We end today's show at Silverstone, UK, not on the racetrack, but in the iZone Driver Performance Center. Okay, hi. Freddie Hunt, the son of the 1976 F1 World Champion James, joined three-time world touring car champion Andy Prio for a day's training at his iZone facility. What we do here at iZone is really give the driver a process a solid working method to be able to improve his own or her own performance from the eye tracker through to the neuro tracker, the cardio wall, training in the gym and of course the on-track stuff here in the simulator behind me. This is basically about sharpening up your reflexes, getting you warmed up and also the decision making process with how to knock these lights out as quickly as possible. Try to align a little bit more on your peripheral yeah, I vision. Know, I that. Yeah, it's, you're honing in on it. Yeah. And that's what happens when you're driving, and sometimes that's not good. As soon as you start thinking about it, your score drops. As soon as you try harder, your score drops. It's all about controlling that desire. With the head and helmet weighing around 7 kilograms, neck muscles must withstand up to 3 Gs in most race cars, the equivalent force of 21 kilos. The head is the heaviest part of the body, and that's one place that, with a helmet on, gets worked pretty high in a race car. This gives you the opportunity to, to work those muscles that are very difficult to reach. Even with power steering, the arms take quite a workout in the cockpit. If you have downforce, then you've got a lot of heavy load. If you've got no downforce and mechanical grip, like a touring car, you've got lots of little corrections going on. In Formula One, a lot of strength had to come from the hand, funny enough, just holding on. And then you need power in the legs. At high speed, you've got lots of downforce. So you've got to really hit the brake and really maximise the yeah. downforce. And it's something that needs to be trained because um, in a road car you tend to be soft on the brake. Nice. So you've got a good first hit and you just didn't get the bleed. You're carrying a lot of brake pressure into the apex and that would cause a load of locking. Here this can be practised over and over again. It's always too late at a test day to suddenly start working on your um, braking technique. And ideally what you want to be able to do is get to the race event or the test and drive naturally. Um, but you, you can't just rely on that, you know, you've got to have rehearsed that um, and it takes experience. So what we're trying to do is shortcut the learning process. Prio has long been an advocate of mental preparation and this comes in the form of the floating ball and burning barrel. Just look at the barrel and concentrate. It's picking up pulses from your brain, alpha and beta. It's going to measure your level of concentration. You're catching the car in front and you're going to beat him. You are fully focused in the zone and you are going to burn that barrel, you're going to pass that car. That just gives you an idea of what concentration is and how, and how it feels and it's something you can practice. And then the opposite end of the scale is now floating the ball, zen breathing. There's lots of chatter at race meetings, lots of distractions. Get rid of all of that, relax and float the ball. Practice your zen. Hunt is now ready to head into one of the facility's three simulators. What we do here is a lot of mental rehearsal work, training and preparation, and get the driver to do all his work before he gets in the car. What we're going to be doing here is measuring your pupil and where you're looking in the corner, and more importantly, when you're looking into the corner. A lot of young drivers, especially coming from karting, don't look far enough ahead. He's flicking a little bit between inside and outside. Um, vision into the apex there is good could look up earlier to the exit there and that would help him. So by lifting your vision up to the exit sooner, it picks up your mid-corner speed naturally and it gives you anticipation and puts you ahead of the car really. We can do it, you know, instant data analysis here. Looking in nice and early, look in. Now look up to your exit, look up, look up, power. Look at the difference in speed here. You see? Difference in corner speed. You just picked up probably about 10 or 12 Ks there. Here you go. 
you can just see here, just with that little bit of assistance there, his corner speeds have picked up substantially. What you don't want is to be driving the car and thinking. That wants to be purely natural. We do all the training here, so when you get in the car, you've done all your work, and it's natural, instinctive driving. Next time, why triple NASCAR champ Tony Stewart keeps on racing, and what happened next to the mechanics who put their car back in the rally. Meanwhile, join us on YouTube, Twitter, and at mobile1thegrid.com, home of the best motorsport videos on the web. This week on YouTube, check out the new technology on the Porsche 919 Hybrid. See you next time.